So there's a new Pirates of the Caribbean movie coming out, which makes sense. Disney's had so much success with their theme park movies. There was Pirates of the Caribbean, the Country Bears movie that nobody saw, the Haunted Mansion movie that nobody liked, the Tomorrowland movie that nobody saw or liked, oh, and a Mission to Mars movie that I literally didn't know existed until I decided to make this video. And now they're gonna make a Jungle Cruise movie which like, we'll see. I feel like theme parks are such a treasure trove of original movie ideas and all this potential is being squandered right now. So I made a list of overlooked adaptations that I think they should make next. Number one. Big Thunder Mountain. The official story of this attraction is that there is an abandoned western town and periodically a ghost train rolls through the station with no crew or passengers. I know this because there's an official song about it that they never use anywhere but it exists. The only thing better than a train is a ghost train. And the only thing better than a ghost train is a country song about a ghost train. The movie would be a musical, obviously. Number two, Splash Mountain. Splash Mountain is one of the most iconic Disney rides, but Song of the South hasn't been for sale in the US for a while. And every time people think about it, they get kind of uncomfortable. I think they need to recontextualize this ride by giving Br'er Rabbit a new work in the Disney canon to anchor him to. The best part is it's a guaranteed cash cow because of how huge furry culture is these days. They can keep all the characters like exactly as they are, but just introduce one new one who's like, like an uncomfortably over-sexualized possum. You know, there's like a possum mom at the end of Splash Mountain that's like sad and she's singing like, Br'er Rabbit's gonna die. They could just switch out her animatronic with this towering, six foot tall, leggy, curvaceous, furry anime possum mom. She's got like the anime swoopy bangs over one eye. And otherwise that scene is exactly the same. Or Zootopia already made like a billion dollars so they could just have Zootopia 2 be set in Critter Country. Nick and Judy get tasked by animal FBI to go investigate like an animal trafficking ring in this rural area. And all of the characters from Splash Mountain are like secondary characters. Uh, Nick and Judy are uncomfortable about how race politics are still a thing in the American animal south. It's lighthearted. It's fun. Number three, the Enchanted Tiki Room. You have a cabin full of talking parrots and flowers that are apparently like at war with literal gods. And they don't even care about it. Like a thunderstorm kicks in during the show and then Michael the parrot's like, the gods have been angered by all the celebrate. And they're all kind of like, oh well. Happens every show. Number four, Cosmic Ray's Starlight Cafe. This movie would just be an exact ripoff of Casablanca, but instead of happening in Rick's cafe, the movie is just set in Cosmic Ray's Starlight Cafe in Disney World's Tomorrowland. This is a cafeteria style eatery where you can eat burgers while you're being serenaded by an animatronic alien named Sunny Eclipse. He just sings endlessly to you on like a 25 minute loop, sometimes about the burgers that you're eating and how you should eat more of them. As time goes by is nice, but imagine how much more poignant that scene would have been if you were listening to Sunny Eclipse's Planetary Boogie and maybe Ingrid Bergman's characters trying to secure a park hopper ticket so she can enjoy all four parks at Disney World Resort instead of just Magic Kingdom. Number five, Haunted Mansion, but not that other Haunted Mansion movie. That would be the title of the movie. The Haunted Mansion already has a built-in story. Like you wander into this dilapidated mansion and you get welcomed by this ghost host who's like sort of sinister, sort of friendly, like 75% unhelpful. I always thought it was funny how the ghost host brings you inside, shows you like half of the house, and then you get to the ballroom and he's like, oh, there's a party in the ballroom. I wanna go have fun, bye. And just totally abandons you at this ghost party where you don't know anybody. And you're just awkwardly there like, well, you invited me. I don't have anyone to talk to. I don't wanna just, you know, be that guy that's at the snack table all night. I don't even know if mortals can eat the food here. I feel like this is a very universal experience. And then feeling awkward, you wander into the attic where you find the one actually scary ghost in the whole house. This terrifying ghost bride who startles you so you fall backwards out the window and you die and become a ghost yourself. Again, universal experience. Number six, 
horse-drawn streetcar. Ever since they closed the ranch, the only place you can see the horses at Disneyland is on Main Street, pulling the horse-drawn streetcar. I think we need a big film franchise to shine a spotlight on this often overlooked ride. Such an extreme attraction needs an extreme film to go along with it. I'm thinking like Fast and the Furious franchise, but on Main Street. We have the horse-drawn streetcar, the double-decker bus, the Surrey with the fringe on the top, all racing 200 miles an hour down a never-ending stretch of Main Street storefronts. The Dapper Dan's Barbershop Quartet is obviously the big enemy. They're on their four-person tandem bicycle. Number seven, Cars Land. In the Cars movies, the town the cars are from is called Radiator Springs, and it's implied to be in Arizona. When you go to the theme park, the big sign outside the town says Cars Land and it's in California. To me, this suggests that Cars Land as we know it from the theme park is set in an alternate universe, which might explain how humans are able to visit it. So picture this, you're driving down Route 66, it's one of those long, lonely stretches, and your car breaks down. You're hungry and you're tired and you need help, so you get out of your car and you start walking down the road, and suddenly you arrive at a town called Cars Land when you get inside, everyone in the town is living cars. At first, these cars view you as a novelty. They invite you to the local diner, Flo's V8 Cafe, and they're surprised that you can't drink motor oil um, or eat lug nuts or whatever the cars eat. One of the cars laughs and goes, you're not a very good car. You still haven't eaten and you're pretty exhausted, so they show you to the Cozy Cone Motel. The cars start to notice other things. You don't have any headlights to see by at night, and you're slower than all the cars. Inadequate. One of them says, you're a bad car. And none of them laughed this time. You start to feel really uneasy. When you think the cars are gone, you creep out to the front office of the motel. You're tugging on your clothes self-consciously and looking around, and you ask to use the phone. The desk clerk car just stares and says, you're a bad car. And she moves as if to approach you. You start running down the main road of Cars Land. It's quiet and empty. You start turning and looking in the buildings and through the windows you can see cars peering out at you with their giant windshield eyes. You wonder if they sleep, you can't be sure. They start to slowly roll out of the buildings toward you. You're a bad car. You don't know what they'll do if they get close, but you don't want to find out. Number eight, Space Mountain. It's a mountain in space, y'all. Yeehaw! Number nine, Main Street Electrical Parade. This is the sequel to Horse Drawn Streetcar. Its international title is Two Horse, Two Streetcar. In this film, our Horse Drawn Streetcar crew faces a new challenge. This squad of twinkly lighted behemoths' lives will be lost. Loyalties will be tested. Who will come out on top? Number 10, Star Tours. One of my favorite attractions is Star Tours. This attraction has such a detailed, immersive lore, and it's set in its own whole giant universe that they invented just for this one theme park ride. It's this whole sci-fi world with its own creatures and planets and memorable characters. It's really just crying out for its own movie, like obviously some kind of action-packed space adventure. It could even have good franchise potential. So that's my list. Bye. At the end of the Cars Land movie, Rod Serling comes out to like narrate and explain what happened, but he's a car himself now. His name is Hot Rod Serling. My car name would be GP Nickelspin. If you're gonna comment, comment your car name. I want the comments of this video to be nothing but car pun names. If you already commented without following this rule, it must be because you're a bad car. You're a bad car.